Hey, how's it going? Good, how are you doing? Doing good. Got a unique item for you to look at today. All right, it looks pretty unique. This is the armor of a French cavalry carbonier. A carbonier? Carbonier. Well, I don't have the French accent down. <laughs> This armor and helmet belonged to an elite cavalry unit in the French army. It was only about 2,000 made. It was purchased by my parents in Paris, France in 1961, and it's been in our family since then. I'm hoping to get $15,000 for it today, but to be honest, I'm not really sure what the value of it is. So what can you tell me about this stuff? This was worn by a French cavalryman back in the period of the Second French Empire, which would be about 1850 to about 1870 and they were an elite cavalry organization in the French army. Okay, cool. Armor was actually functional up to like maybe the early 1600s. The problem was as armies began to get more and more guns and more and more powerful guns. So they started having to make the armor heavier and heavier and heavier. And basically it got to the point where you couldn't function in it. And they began to realize that if troops were just wearing normal clothes, they could run around, defend themselves better, reload faster because it was all about you know, rate of fire at that point. Since this is from the mid 1800s, I'm guessing this is worn for parade dress only, right? No, actually, it was uh, worn in combat too. They actually the... wore this in combat? Yes. I don't know if you've ever seen some of the pictures of the Battle of Waterloo where it shows the cavalry charging the British squares that basically you can see they were all wearing the breastplates. Okay. This is really cool. If this guy is right, this armor could have actually been worn by someone fighting for Napoleon III and the Franco Prussian War. Come on, Rick, put it on. Yeah, this, uh... It would be a tight fit. Uh, yeah, not even a tight fit. This is like an Iron Maiden. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, you need the helmet. I see, here. Yeah. All right, look. You look like a doofus. <laughs> I know you were saying they were supposed to wear this in battle, but I'm thinking that this right here just tells me you would not wear that in a battle. Mm -hmm. These giant puncture things. <laughs> And how much did you want for it? You know, I'll cut you a good deal. Looking for around 15000 for it. Um, quite frankly, I can't tell you whether that's a good deal or not. I have never seen one of these things before, and I just don't know enough about it. So let me have my buddy look at it. All right, fair enough. Right. I'll be right back. OK. I believe it's original. So if I'm told it's not real, that would probably be a shock to me. Where did you get this? We purchased it from a Paris antique dealer back in 1961. OK. Uh, carabinier à cheval. That's who would wear a piece of armor like this. That's French for soldier on a horse, basically. OK. And uh, it would have been worn in the 1800s by mounted cavalry. This is definitely Second Empire. You can tell the difference, basically, because the earlier breastplate will have a crown uh, on the eagle. Um, and they actually wore this in battle? Um, by the time they were wearing this, a square shot to the chest with a musket would totally go right through this. But this still could have been worn in battle, and here's why. Uh, by this time, these were like shock troops. You know, when these guys ran at you in a line of horses with shiny armor, uh, it made an impact. Back in the day, the French cavalry were a force to be reckoned with. You're facing the French army, and imagine, if you will, over a hill come 100 horses, uh, guys sitting on top of them wearing shiny armor, and they're charging you. It was like a tank rolling your way. OK, Rick, what are your concerns? He wants a lot of money for this thing. Are these ever faked? Yes. OK. Let me take a look. One of the things I always do is smell leather, because as you know, new leather smells. So this is definitely at least 30-year-old leather. Um, I'd like to look at the soldering. You see if it's something that's going to actually hold up in battle a little bit. And it's got a lot of nice aging inside. You know, this very difficult to reproduce a, a finish like this. But I just think it would be really odd to wear this in the battlefield, especially with these giant spikes inside the front. You know, there'd be quilting underneath it and other kinds of stuff. So I don't think that these spikes would have made much of a difference. Uh, helmet's got the original lining, nice horsehair plume. Rick, your concern is, is it real? Yeah. Uh, my answer is, yes, it is. OK. C'est bon. All right, so what's it worth? <sighs> this is one of these tough calls. Um, the market for this is very focused and small. If I was a dealer buying this, I would, I would buy it as if it were going to sell for six grand. And then if you put this in a European auction, it could go higher. Thanks, man. Rick, 
Always a pleasure. Hey, Monsieur nice Richard, by. thank you. I really like this piece. It's definitely rare, and it would look really cool in my shop. But the market on this stuff is really limited, so I have to be careful on what I pay for it. I'll give you four grand. Why don't we make it five grand? We'll call it a deal. No, let's make it three, and I'll be happy. <laughs> it's not here. I mean, I'll go 45. How about five? Rick, five's a little high. You're only going to see these in a museum. You don't see them on the market. I know it's unique, and it'll look really cool in my store, but um, there's limited customers. Um... If we can do five, we got a deal. You know what? What the hell? I think I can sell it. You got it. OK, I'll meet you right over there. It was less money than I hoped to get, but I have to be honest and say, I really wasn't sure of the value. And you have to listen to the expert and hear what the expert has to say.